Elmira doesn't do much around his Carroll County farm without the help of his shadow, six-year-old Ryan. He's like a mini-me. He's right there with me. Right there, soaking it all up. It really surprises me. I'll have a piece of machinery break, and as I'm getting ready to fix it, he'll be telling me how he thinks it should be done, and he's telling me the exact thing that I was going to do anyway. Like many farm kids, Ryan and his sister's four-year-old Aubrey and two-year-old Emily are starting young. I don't think there's any better way for kids to grow up on a farm. They're exposed to the whole circle of life at a couple years old. You know, they've seen things being born, they've seen things die. It's really amazing. Experiences their dad, who wasn't raised on a farm, enough? didn't have. Today, he raises Black Angus cattle and about 300 acres of corn, wheat, soybeans, and hay. But when I started, I didn't really think it was an option. Of course, I wanted to be a farmer full time, but didn't really think it was in the cards. When it comes to grain farmers, Colin is a rare breed, a first generation farmer. Breaking into the business isn't easy or cheap. It takes a lot of land and expensive equipment. To get where he is today, Colin had to start economical. All right, this is a 1955 Farmall 400. It was the first tractor I ever had. Actually, my parents gave it to me as a graduation present, and it was in rougher shape than what it is now. The 107-acre Stone Valley farm in Westminster was in rough shape, too, when Colin's parents helped him buy it back in 2003. But for Colin and his wife, Janet, it was a beginning. Anybody tells you they're going to start from scratch and farm full time, I mean, you look at them like they're crazy. And I'd probably do the same thing if somebody told me that today. But one thing about it, if somebody starts like that from scratch, that means that they really want it. Starting from scratch, one of the biggest hurdles is having enough land. In Westminster, like much of the state, farmers often lease acreage to supplement their home farms. To turn a profit growing grain, farmers need volume, and the competition for land can be intense. The biggest thing is getting yourself established, getting a name for yourself. You know, when you're the new guy and no one, no one knows you, it's not that they don't like you, but you know, if they don't know you, they're not gonna offer you a, a chance to rent their land. Lucky for him, all his hard work early on didn't go unnoticed. I watched him very closely and seemed like he was doing an excellent job. And so I contacted him whether he was interested in doing some custom work for me. A few years ago, after farming for more than six decades, Carol Bish reluctantly decided he could use someone to help him manage his 130-acre farm. You can see the difference in, we started with one kind of wheat down right. here, remember? Carol didn't want to give up control of the crop and the profit that came along with owning it. So he and Colin have a custom farming arrangement. That means Colin does the work, but Carol owns the crop and has the final say. The biggest thing I've learned from him is never to doubt what he says, because he will come off with some stuff that sounds all but crazy. I learned not to doubt it because nine chances out of 10, what Mr. Bish says is gonna come true, good or bad. For Carol, who doesn't have anyone to take over a farm that's been in his family for more than 150 years, he's grateful to have found Colin. I can trust him. And for Colin, the work allows him to pave the way for a second generation. 